So Country Wayne recently went on Club Shay Shay, and uh, we actually reviewed a little bit of it yesterday, but we was uh, on after, now, after Hours, we were reviewing what he was disputing that Jess Hilarious had said to him. And uh, Country Wayne recently appeared on Club Shay Shay, and he was talking about the money, the money aspect of it. Now, um, one of the things that y'all also want to consider or remember is that Faison Love was saying about how Country Wayne wasn't making no real money uh, on the internet. Let me go ahead and, and add this into there. How much money do you think you made through social media? Man, through social media, probably a dog. Probably about just social media? Mm -hmm. Probably about 20, about 20 million last, last, last three years. That's Let's hold off for, for one second, and let's really put that in perspective. 20 M's, and he probably being conservative. 20 million. This, th I'm so glad that you said that, Roger Chavez. Because I was talking about this last night. Roger Chavez says, Country Wayne is a hustler, but he is not funny. He Kevin Hart 2.0. Isn't it ironic that Kevin Hart make more money than any other comedian? And Country Wayne make more money than any other comedian content creator? Because you think that they're not funny, you will overlook them. But see, one of the reasons why Country Wayne and Kevin Hart are my favorite content creators and, and comedians is because they not focused on what the hood think alone. They focusing on figuring out how they can get to the money. They folk listen, some of your favorite comedians, some of the people that you think was the funniest in the movies, and some of the people that died in yesteryear, they died broke. And when I say broke, I mean broke, broke. Broke, broke. That's when I really started monetizing. Mm -hmm. Telling jokes, huh? And skits. Is some skits, man. It's storylines. I was telling jokes at first. You need a partner? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it look like you're doing fine. I tell you what, but hey, you, you know about this money. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, you know, the social media game, you know, it's the in stream ads and stuff, but they didn't have that at first. So right. how I was monetizing at first is getting popular, you go on tour. Right. But I was like, that ain't monetization. Right. Because if that I gotta work. do this, that's work. So I'm like, no, how can I? Learn, because what I did, I was hearing about residuals and all that, and what I did in math, they all the whole thing about math is to simplify something. That's what math is. Mm -hmm. You take 50 over 100 and break it all the way down to one over two. So what I did, I took the TV format, people talking about residual and TV shows, and I, and I minimum, I, I, you know what I'm saying? I took it to, a, I minimized it to a point of, I got my version of that. Okay. And now I'm able to make residuals. I'm making money right now while I'm sitting. And people was laughing at me at first. When I first started doing those skits, people were like, oh, them little skits. Duh, duh. And I went to every, before I started, I went to every social media uh, who was big at the time and sat down with them. And like, hit, I like, look, man, we got to do this social media thing. We come together, we can share storylines, share content. They was all like, uh, nah, they don't seem like, all right, you, you want to keep going out here tap dancing on tour? All right. So that social media thing, when I figured out that niche, Man, I was on to it. And I listen, people always gonna doubt you. They always gonna say, ah no, nah, heck no, nah, whatever. Man, I listen to everybody. If anybody know me, if anybody know me, they be like, yo, Anton, can we collab? Can we do something? I'll be like, Yup, send it to my email. Yup. Oh, you don't wanna know how many subscribers I got? Nope. I don't even care. I just want to kick it. I want to run it up. And if it's convenient for both of us, if it make our schedule, then let's cook up. Let's do an hour. Let's do two hours. Let's figure it out. Man, I don't doubt nobody. I don't doubt nobody. If somebody want to work, if somebody's trying to figure out, that very one you doubt could be the very one to give you that gem that you need to really take off. It could be the connection that you make that allows for you to really be able to run it up. So while all of these other people is trying to figure out how to hate on each other, I'm trying to figure out how to work with you. I'm trying to mine out ideas. I'm trying to, look, I'm going to be honest with you. The whole reason that me and Charleston, I don't know if y'all even remember, 
The whole reason that me and Charleston White ever hooked out up in the first place is because y'all said it in the audience and you said, it was a bunch of people said, Anton, you should do this. Anton, you should do that. Man, chat lives matter to me. I'll be listening to the people and I'll be like, hmm. The reason that I'm a C student is not that I come up with the greatest ideas, is that I figure out how to make them ideas make money. My talent is not always in just being the most creative person. My talent is trying to figure out exactly how I can make it work for us. And so when I listen to people and it started to click and it started to make sense in my head, I'm like, cool. I don't study Cat Williams. I don't study Faison Love. I may like them as comedians or I may like them in a movie. I don't study people that are the funniest or anything like that. I don't study Chris Rock. I don't study any of those people. I study, honestly, and this is the honest to God truth, I study Kevin Hart and Country Wayne because Kevin Hart, I wanted to figure out how he was able to reach more audiences, do the biggest tours, how he was able to align his schedule to be the most productive. I wanted to figure out how he structured his stuff to be a little bit more clean. That's why I started cleaning up my act when it comes to some of the stuff I talk about on the Internet. I can create an entirely different platform to talk the way that I want to talk late night. But when it comes to being able to reach the people, man, listen, I got a whole nother audience that's tied into the date that work in daycares that want to keep me on the TV all day. I'm tied into a whole nother audience of the people that like to rock out with me while they while they in the church. I'm tied into, oh, man, listen, I'm not sitting here trying to be the funniest. I ain't trying to be the coolest. I ain't trying to be the toughest. I just want to reach the biggest audience possible and let them determine whether or not they want to rock out with my message or not. I, I listen to the people that actually know what they're doing, has the biggest work ethic, and is running up the biggest bag. I'm not trying to be the best for y'all. I'm trying to be the best to the people that look at me as, a, as an asset. I seen it, so I ain't care what nobody said. I was doing all kinds of skits. I was an old man one time. I was a character mm -hmm. named Drip. And I'm like, man, this money really on social media. Because that's where everybody eyeballs at. Right. So if I'm an advertiser, right. <clears throat> I'm going to keep pouring money to social media. So I feel like social media was the future, whether people want to accept it or not. But you knew that. I knew that. I knew that because I, I, already really, I, I paid attention and listened. And I realized Hollywood was always the Black ad. Jack said he funny to you. Uh, and that's cool. He not for everybody. It ain't even about the jokes, family. That's what y'all missing in this whole conversation. Y'all get so stuck on the dumb stuff. Y'all get so stuck on the, on the stupid aspect of it. Whenever I see the culture arguing about something, they be arguing over the dumbest jump. Yeah, but he ain't funny as this person. Man, I align with the person that's getting the most money. Oh, you hear the baby in there? I align with the person that's getting the most money. I'm trying to figure out how this dude has figured out how he can monetize it and make more than all of these other comedians that's going on tour every day. Every day. And y'all talking about who getting who, who the funniest. Man, I don't care about who the funniest. I care about who the richest. That's what I model my stuff after. Y'all can have it. Listen, I'm going to let y'all sit and argue all day long over who the funniest. This is called the Millionaire Morning Show. I'm not playing certain segments of the interview. Dang, a baby, loud than up. I'm not playing certain segments of the interview in order to try to figure out who the funny is. I'm playing certain segments of the interview to figure out how it is that they're able to monetize more effectively. Ad business. Mm -hmm. It never was the movie business, right. the TV show business. They always say, let us pay our bills. So you got to pay in an army. You know, commercial. They, yeah, in the army, they teach us teach the detail. Teamwork is the key. So wherever the eyeballs are at, that's where the money going to be at. Right. So if I'm, if I'm looking to my left and the right and people on their phone all day, it's like investing in the stock. I will be stupid to believe that people are watching this more than they watching this. So I'm right. like, these advertisers are going to start pouring this money, and I'm going to be a part of this new generation. You got on the train early. I got on early. I got on early. And I caught the pandemic, because right. we'll never sit down like that again. No. So I was like, man, we sit down, everybody waiting to go back to work? I'm like, no. And everybody wants to be entertained when there's no entertainment going on. Man, I was... <laughs> I got all the kinks practicing. Okay, they like this, the algorithm like this, this like this, this like this, this like this, this like this. I say, bam. I say, man, this old boy. I say, I'm gonna have that boy. That boy figured out a uh, 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 something at work, and he went and got it. He put he put all of his intellect. See, people look at the way that he talk, and they say, ah, oh, man, he must not be that. Be that. Man, listen, the way that boy start analyzing stuff and looking at things a little bit differently, I'm gonna look at it the same way. I'm a billion dollars by the time I'm 50. Listen. You know
I know that this interview didn't do as many numbers as Cat Williams did, but I tell you this, if I'm going to watch an interview, I'm watching this one over Cat Williams all day long. If I got it, come on. Oh, I think it's open. It's open. What's up, love? How you doing? If I'm going to watch an interview, I'm going to watch the one that get the most gems. I'm not going to watch the ones that is just the most entertaining. I got to get something out of it in order for it to be meaningful to me. If I'm going to save an interview on my watch later list, it's going to be this one. I don't, listen, all of that entertainment, that was cool. Cedric the Entertainer, yeah, he stole jokes, and that's all of that is cute. This is where the gems are. This is where the money is. This is the thing that you're supposed to be applying to your life. Forget all of that wrangling back and forth and how you feel about somebody. I'm trying to figure out how I feel about my pocketbook. You know what I'm saying? I already seen it. It was just too many people watching social media. Besides, obviously, you take care of your kids, <clears throat> you take care of your family. What are some of the other things Wayne spent his money on? What do you spend your money on for you? It, uh, for me, I got a Rolls Royce, my house furnished, you know what I'm saying? I got a couple of houses. I got a house in Bel Air, house in Atlanta, condo in Atlanta. Bel Air? Yeah. Yeah. You ain't talking about, you ain't talking about uh, uh, my boy Ross drink, right? You talking about Bel Air, like right up the street yeah. from me? Yeah, that's where I came from. Yeah. You looking for a partner in them skits, man. You know how your boy, your boy can sing, I can well, dance a little. I don't know who you think you fooling. <laughs> you get Shay Shay got his own skits. I know you, I know you be checking the RPM and, and CPM. So, so you got a place in Bel Air, you got a place in Atlanta. Yeah, I got, uh, I got a, a house, I got a house in McDonald's and then um, I got a condo in Atlanta. Okay. Mm -hmm. You spread out, yeah, hey. Yeah. You yeah, and I got a couple. I got a couple apartments. I got. I got a. I got another. No, I got two houses in um, Atlanta and another apartment. And baby mamas, everybody got apartments. But I use all that stuff to shoot skits in too. Right. So that's my studio. They they, they don't even know that's your studio. That's your. Yeah, they don't know, but I, listen here. <laughs> Well, listen here, it's hand over fist because I understood the content and I spend my money on content. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I, you know, uh, I purchase content now. The post on my page that I don't even film. Right. That's how I'm really right. working without working now. Right. And and you know that content. I spend my money on content. You know, so I got some real estate stuff I'm about to do. I got some movies. I put my own money up in my own movies. Right. Um, my my Netflix special. I finance my own special. You know, what I'm saying the license. Now think about this for a minute. I want y'all to take take two things out of what he just said because this is what I'm taking out of it. He said he's spending more time purchasing content now. He's doing the same thing as Apple and Netflix. He's building up a content library that then generates way more revenue and allows for him to be able to get to the bag because you can license that content and you'll be making money off of it forever. I went back and I looked at some of my old videos last night while I was on After Hours. And then when I got off of it, I went back and I looked at the analytics and the data, right? And so I was looking at how much money that, that that's a lot of those old videos that went viral because, you know, Ever since the last time that I looked at them, some of those videos had got over 100,000 more views. The 1.6 million on one of the viral videos turned into 1.75 million, right? Um, as far as the amount of views and watch time. And I went through and I made sure that everything was still monetized or whatever. Man, don't you know that um, over the last six months, the amount of money that that content then generated for me because it's going to live forever? Don't you know the amount of like from my urban exploration videos that the amount of money that I made from them was not just from the AdSense that I got from it, but also since I was one of the last people to document some of those structures that ain't even there anymore, that they asked me and they have to license out my content in order to be able to use it for a certain amount of time. And then if they want to continue to license it, then they got to repay for that stuff again. He's doing the same thing as Netflix and Apple and Fox and Disney, but he's doing it on a content creator's level. But everybody missed the gems because everybody's so focused on whether or not they think he's funny or not. Faison Love over there missing the gems because he can't fucking figure, excuse me, he can't freaking figure out how to get into the game. You see what I'm saying? So when you start to break it down and you start to look at it, it's different. It hit different. Now, the other thing that I'll say is, Think about it like this. Country Wayne has never had the greatest acting accolade, accolades. I'm not even sure I could remember Country Wayne ever even being in a movie, but he's producing a new movie. So while Taraji P. Henson is over there uh, complaining and saying, oh my God, I can't believe that they're not paying me what they think that I'm worth. 
Country Wayne just told you that he made $20 million over the last three years at least. Ain't nobody waiting on nobody to give you nothing. You got to go out there and create it for yourself. We always think that somebody owe us something. It's the industry. They won't let us in. I don't need them. All I need is you. One person at a time. The way I started my content creation career is that I went out on the streets and I would interact with people and then I would make sure that I that they remembered my name, which allowed for me to make to make them a fan one person at a time because one turn into two, two into two turn into four, four to eight, eight to sixteen, sixteen to thirty two, thirty two to sixty four, sixty four to one twenty eight, one twenty eight to five twelve. Like this is a a a snowball effect. You see what I'm saying? And you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So I'm not going to sit here and complain about what somebody ain't giving me. I don't have to be the most talented in your eyes. I just got to be the most talented in your eyes. Because my audience going to find me. It's 9 billion people on the face of this earth. You think that my audience ain't going to find me? You think that I got to wait for a system in order to make sure that I get my people? My people is my people. This is Netflix, so I spend my money. I flip my money. Right. Oh, uh, because I grew up flipping, so I'm addicted to the flip. Right. Some people get addicted to the drug, but I got addicted to flipping. Right. So I love taking my money and investing into me because I know Because you believe in you. Oh, oh, I believe in me. Wayne gonna get it. They can say what they want to about Wayne every time. <laughs> the country, the country boy here, I ain't stuck what they talking about. I mean, <clears throat> obviously, like growing up how we grew up in small towns, you're from Millen, Georgia, I'm from Glenville, Georgia, and only you dream like, man. To know that you got a place in Bel Air and you got you buy coastal, you got places in Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, and this place as, as I mentioned in Bel Air. What is Wayne right now? What are you most proud of what you've been able to do thus far? Man, employ, and man, employ the people that work with me, man. To see they, you know what I'm saying? Like my boy Mike Bliss, me and my brother were going through the numbers, and I'm like, man, I paid him a million dollars this year. You know what I'm saying? And the, the, the people that I be able to bless, I'm like, man, I'm able to bless everybody, seeing everybody else get their cars and their businesses. That's the most thing, that's the most, all that stuff. I only got a place in LA, cause you know by the time you come out here handle your business, you get Airbnbs, add up, it's about the same. Right. So I'm like, I gotta have a place comfortable, my clothes are already here, I got. Right. So. And it's a place to call your own. Yeah, you know what I mean? So when I'm out here, I can write clear, but man, right. the most, I'm proud of being able to bless others, man. When right. I see that, I be like, dang, look at, look at Ro, look at my sisters, look at my brothers, they balling. Right. I'm like, man, that's what, that's what it's about, man. That's that's the only thing that get me like I get excited for them to get more. Look at this, look 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 at this right here. Live in them hills might have to bow to the keeper. My people are the worst. I I do. I believe that my people are the worst. I believe that God cursed the majority of the culture to just be victims for the rest of their life. God cursed them. Even when he took him out of the, the hands of Pharaoh and he had the Red Sea swallow up Pharaoh because Pharaoh's heart was hardened, they were still whining and complaining. I think that my people are some of the worst ever, bro. Right. Well, I'm like, well, I can't wait to pay. If I pay you a million this year, well, I'm trying to pay you a two million this year. Because the more I pay you, the more, the you more got coming. I know I got coming. Right. So yeah, that, that's what I'm proud of the most. What's your favorite luxury item that you own? My favorite luxury item? I ain't gonna lie, man. I got I got that um pepper, that, I mean um that pink Rolls Royce, and it was the only one of its kind that had. I like that. Uh, Why'd you get pink? Man, you don't sell no damn Mary Kay. Nah, the Be Beverly, <laughs> <laughs> the guy, the Beverly Hills man, Rolls Royce. The time they used for like the, they show black. I mean, he thought I got a wrap, right? But that's the only color they made right. like that. So I was like, this special, this my favorite, this one of my favorite dreams, different, cause it's the black badge and it's pink. You know you can't creep in that. Dude. That's the only problem. You can't creep, no, you can't. That's the creep. only problem, man. I can't, I can't got darn driving. <laughs> but what's the favorite place you've been? What's your favorite place to travel to? Where does Wayne go to relax? LA. Cause they got this vegan food out here. Oh man, this man talking about some vegan food. Yeah, I, I eat all day. When I'm out here, I handle my business and they support the vegan movement. It'd be right. food everywhere. The restaurants is good, so I love coming to LA. Well, I mean, uh, in Atlanta, the only place I mean I know the Slutty Vegan. Yes, yeah, shout out to Slutty Vegan. Um, but Atlanta don't really support it like that. Nah. Especially nah. if you stay on the outskirts. See, and I uh, hear you could be on the outskirts. Oh, they got it. And still, they still got it. Yeah. So I love LA, man. You yeah. know, for real. Jewelry. I mean, you got. I mean, you got a nice subtle piece. You got enough with a nice watch, a yeah. ring. But you're not. 
You're not draped. You're not dripping. Nah, nah, man. I keep, I keep me a watch. It's Rose Royce presidential right. with the flawless diamonds, right. pink and ring, VVS, and I keep my Jesus popping chain. And that about the only jewelry in the earring. I keep the same set. That's it. Yep. You purchased anything else? Mmm, nah. Nah, I purchased something for my family. Like my daughter, I just bought her VVS chain, and and my son, they got VVSs, and nah. I got cars, I got Maybach, and you know what I'm saying, G-Bag, ah, Sprinter vans, and all that. I mean, you know, when, when you went out in, when you know, not in Cali, you let your boy get that up, you know. Oh, the Somebody said, how's my brother? Did y'all see my mother? Or did y'all miss that part of the show? Y'all didn't see my mother? Jesus Christ. Anyways, my brother looked just like him. I mean, my mother looked just like him. Yeah, the Maybach. Yeah, the Maybach out. Yeah, the Maybach out here. I keep that out here. I know you do. That's what I'm saying. I could drive, and nobody don't know who I am. So everybody in LA, everybody, you know, it's Maybachs all through the street. All through, the, and that's how your boy be able to fit in. I'll be able to get Man, in and get out. You that. got it all. I'm finna ask you some questions. <laughs> <laughs> what's it? What's it? investing? You uh -huh. mentioned about how you like to flip your money. So you're uh -huh. in the flipping game. Uh -huh. You know, some people get get enjoyment in, uh, out of other things. You like, okay, I'm gonna take my money, put it here, knowing I'm gonna double, you know, two exit, three exit. Uh huh. Where did you learn that from? Streets. You know what I'm saying? When you ain't from getting that dope fronted, and you got to buy it. You know what I'm saying? You got to buy your dope, sell it. You got to sell it, put your re up back first, then you keep the profit. And sometimes you made enough profit, you put it back in the mortar so you buy a bigger package. Because mm -hmm. the more you got, the more you're able to move. Right. So the streets, if you make it out, you know what I'm saying? I tell everybody, you know, um, ain't too many people in my position, especially a comedian. My kind of person don't make it here. Right. We're in prison. We probably got out. We got us a lawn service or a trucking business or something. Mm -hmm. You can't be cool and get some money and make it here because the eyeballs on you too early. Right. Y'all said, so you having a family day, everybody. No, um, everybody is here to see Rita right now. So everybody is over there to see Rita because, you know, they checking on her and making sure that she's taken care of and stuff like that. So it's a lot of family that's flying in from out of town. Some family live close to me. But we are really, really close knit. So that's my oldest brother. Actually, it's funny because my oldest brother uh, is seven years older than me. So we tease him about that all the time. And his gray is really starting to come through on his beard. But, um, yeah, so the whole family is here to see Rita because, you know, she had her surgery yesterday. So everybody is here to see her. Um, and we all family. Like, everybody is really family family. So everybody is here with the babies and stuff like that. So we don't have a whole full day today. But let me get back to this investment part because there's one part that I want to actually get to that people earmarked for me. You know what I'm saying? The dude, the, the, think about the dude in high school that was number one. He mm -hmm. never make it. Right. Everybody be like, high school, you was it. So I I still got that same mentality from the streets, because most people from the streets don't make it. Right. You know, every once in a while you get a Jay-Z, a 50 who understand the flip game. But right. it's always, brother, if you, like I tell people who be in this film industry and stuff, if you ain't finna put no money in you, why would a studio just give you some money? Right. Just think about that. Mm -hmm. If my kids don't put no work in, I'm not finna help you with your basketball career and you ain't practicing yourself. Right. So I always knew, man, when you flip that money and believe in you, some kind of way. It's gonna happen. It go, it's gonna happen. You know what I mean? And I believe in flipping that money. Like, I got a movie that I'm, you know, I just finished the script. Me and Steven Lord did, they clone, they clone Tyrone. We teaming up and doing the movie. Right. Now we gotta go pitch it to the studio after this step. Right. Finna, Finna hit up Robert Townsend. That's what we getting as director. Right. I ain't worried about the no. Because the movie team being or whatever, I'm gonna film it myself. Right. So he said, listen, he don't care nothing about no no's. He don't care nothing about no gatekeepers. He don't care nothing about none of that. He put his own money up. Even when he go out and let's just say somebody, you know what I'm saying, finance the rest of it or pay for it from him. He said, look, man, I'm gonna put my own money up. I don't need nobody else. I don't need nobody else to make sure that I'm taken care of. I don't need nobody else. And see, that's the difference between a, a person that is intentional and is not waiting for anything. All they need is an opportunity. They waiting. They got the talent. They go figure it out. And all they need is the opportunity. My, my high school principal always said that success is when opportunity meets preparation. They prepared and they just waiting on the opportunity. I'm going to be successful. And he said, listen, I ain't worried about what nobody else is talking about. I'm doing me. I'm running it up. I'm putting my own money up. And we're going to get to that bag. I, I love, man, I'm telling you, bro, 
I model my work ethic. I model, I model how I do things. I model the way that I figure out how to get the money. And if anybody is has a, uh, is a part of the Patreon, you know, it's people that got way, 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 way. I mean, I'm doing really well from a subscriber's perspective, right? Um, I'm blessed. You know, I'm, I'm among the top 1% of people that actually get to certain levels uh, in YouTube and content creation in a general sense. But when you really break it down, and the Patreon members have seen the amount of money that we bust down. They see the type of money that we take down. They see the type my deposits every single month. And that ain't that's just on one front. They also see the sponsorships. They see the way that I monetize. Ain't nobody getting more money than us. In no way, shape, or... Yeah, it's going to be a couple, right? You're going to have the Aiden Rosses and stuff like that. But in a general sense, we don't care about... Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we going to get to it. We... We're going to maximize what can be maximized. All of my receipts is in a Patreon. I actually log in. I show the people. I give them the receipts. I break it down. I tell them how they can do it too. And that's on you how you play it from there. But ain't nobody busting down more money than us. I will tell you this. It's huge, massive YouTubers that get coaching from me. And they got five times the subscribers that I got. Six times, seven times the subscribers that I got. And they not getting more money than us. And so... I coach them on how they can maximize the return on what it is that they got putting out there. Hey, you need to focus on this. This is the best way to do it or whatever. But I get that. I give all of that to my bag chasers. The chasers is getting that. They got that video to live forever that they can reference. And so I'm telling you, bro, it's so much money. It is so, bro, money is everywhere. Money is all around you. And I ain't even just talking about from a content creation perspective. I'm talking about money is everywhere. I look out the window and I see so many opportunities. I just don't have the capacity to be able to do it. And so I have to make an informed decision on which direction that I want to go in because I don't, it's only 24 hours in a day. And if I did anything else, I really wouldn't sleep. I already run this. I already do the real estate. I already built the houses. I already got the web development company. I already maximized on the fact that I'm literally dialed into work right now, making money at work while I'm talking to you on this live stream. And people will come to me and say, I can't believe you got a regular job. Nigga, I can't believe that you broke. I got eight streams of income. What you mean you can't believe I got a regular job? I can't believe you ain't working. Two jobs at the same time. What's the goal? Is the goal to get richer or illegally or is the goal to just sit here and, and talk about and, and talk about what somebody else is trying to get? Oh, it's like a confidence come with and trust me, when they know you got money, people are hard to tell you no. Right. A woman ain't gonna let you go while you up. <laughs> Unless she got that prenup with you. So <laughs> the whole game is like a woman. So I just learned that from the street. The algorithm, the business, everything like a woman's energy. So man, you gotta man, you gotta flip that money. What do you what uh you have do you like a uh, investment property, stocks? Yeah, I do that too. I gotta I'm, I'm investing back in my hometown and I'm gonna film skits while I'm doing it. When Wayne goes back to his own time, I'm gonna right. monetize off the whole process. Right. You know what I'm saying? Cause you get a subdivision down there, you get like 30 lots for like um, half a million, then you spend some two hundred thousand dollar houses on each house. You know what I'm saying? So two hundred thousand times thirty by six million, mm -hmm. you got your whole thirty houses. You got the opportunity to to rent them out, and if you do that cash, you go take. Once you get all that cash, you go take that back to the bank and get a loan. Now you got your cash back because if you start off with cash, the game is easy. Right. It's like if you buy one house for five hundred thousand cash, right, mm -hmm. and you want to buy another one, you take the money back to the bank. Get your 500 back, or even if they give you 380, you get a 120 somewhere, you buy another house. As long as you start off with cash, you can always keep going. And you've been on built up, but it's when you try to initiate with no cash. Right. 